Welcome back to another episode of the Safeties Off Show. Got to get my Dirty Duck Cup. Proud sponsor. If you haven't already, go and listen to the last or watch or both. Uh, watch and listen to the last episode with the Dirty Duck owners. It was a good one. Enjoyed having them on. Today, I'm joined by the one and only Justin Rogers. Justin Rogers, everybody. Glad to be here. Where's Glad my... I have here. an applause thing. We can't hear it, but they can. Oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, I'm going to get to our sponsors, and then me and Justin are going to talk about basically why I look like I've been hit with a sack of bricks. Uh, I am tired. Yeah. Tired today, and I can feel it. I know I'm wearing it, but... Man, it's Labor Day. You had day Labor off. Day, and I put all the labor in today <laughs> for the whitetail. So, uh, our first sponsor, Dirty Duck Coffee. Years ago, a passion and legacy was created over a common obsession for the wild pursuit of waterfowl. It evolved into a coffee and apparel brand called Dirty Duck. I've replaced my coffee with Dirty Duck. It's the easiest ad read of all time because the coffee's awesome, and their gear's great, too. Check them out. Use promo code KCO15. 15% off your entire purchase. This next one, I got to make a little goodie bag. I got to make a little bag of this stuff for you yeah. and for Jordan to try. Yeah. Um, it's pretty legit. Pre-workout, dino climbing. Use KCO15 at checkout when you purchase their pre-workout. Says it's a pre-workout for climbers, but technically you're a climber. You know, technically that is correct. You're a tree climber. I climbed a tree four times yesterday, and then I woke up, and it's the first thing I did today that was like... In, I, Couldn't I get it off your brain. On, you're such a I tree climber. Yes. And I climbed a tree. God, you're such a you're such a climber. You're such a cool guy. So use KCO15 to check out when you buy Dino Climbing's pre workout. I have the berry, pretty dang good. It's actually Bigfoot Berry is what it's called. Uh, and our next sponsor is Triptech. We followed these guys forever. It's a five in one hunting multi tool. Got it right here. It's like my fidget spinner during the episode. Check it out. Did you just bring back fidget spinners? I did bring back fidget spinners right there. <laughs> I play with it during the episode. Uh, it works as a punch. You use it to unscrew choke tubes. Upland hunters can even use it to distinguish between mature or juvenile birds. It's an awesome piece of equipment that you must have on your lanyard. Let's get to the show. Let's talk about some whitetail deer. Bro, I almost caught that one. You got that heater on full blast. You got all the windows down, and you're just. <laughs> 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 so all right, so Justin, you have been grinding. You and Jordan have been grinding. Well, I mean, one of us has been grinding, mm. and the other one is Jordan. It took 20 seconds to call out <laughs> Jordan in this episode. That's a new record. Yeah, hey, but my man's been stepping it up recently. Yeah, he for went. Sure. He went. Okay, so y'all. You filmed a couple scouting videos, mm -hmm. scouting public land, and then you scouted with Jordan once mm -hmm. and posted that video. Yep. That's the one that's doing pretty well for yeah. us. It's like 600 views or so. I don't know. Um, Jordan's video techniques are interesting. Yeah. They're interesting. So, so I watched the video, and the first thing I thought, I was like, holy cow, this is the best one of all time. 100%. This is, this is the best one we have. Um, it was pretty good. And then I go into the, the grumpy old man's office at work. If you listen to the last episode, you know about the grumpy old man I work with. I go in there, and he was like, Tyler, really? Why is the cameraman <laughs> shooting to a dead turtle? And I was like, dang, I didn't even I didn't even think of it like that. Because we couldn't get a shot of a live bird. <laughs> yeah, live, yeah, like there had to have been a bird out there he could have got a picture of or a video of or anything. I got to fix my chair. But, yeah, a dead turtle. Just... Just all of a sudden, it's like good. It's like focusing on things. Oh, it's a cool little grasshopper, spider web, dead turtle. <laughs> dead so, turtle. if that's what you were scouting for, you got it. Hey, we're locked onto the dead turtles. Yes, dead turtles. No, man, Did you mark it on your on X? Uh, you know, I, I just should have. Uh, Moron. Man, I'm not idiot. gonna be able to find that dead turtle shell. Idiot. But I tell you what, I was really impressed with him. Uh, if you if you watch the video, you see that he's he's actually never ran a camera before like that. Like the yeah. only thing he's ever used is an iPhone. And here we are with a Canon G50, and um, I had him out of the truck, and I, I got a new support system. Um, if you watch the first yeah, it was scouting sweet. video that I did, I am so sorry for the nausea that I caused you because oh, yeah. it's so hard to hold that thing. I mean, I tried to pan over to a deer, and just the fine movement of your hand, you can't get it to stop. Right. So that little base does wonders. Uh, but, yeah, first time running it, 
Like uh, he was doing, he was doing some really good stuff. And, and a matter of fact, he came over to the house yesterday, and we were climbing up trees together, um, <laughs> which my wife made fun of us I- immensely. Um, As she should. Yeah, but um, yeah, he's making, he's getting these shots. Uh, you know, he's he's doing some sweeps, and some of it wasn't the greatest, but like you could take it and clip it, and it ended up being some really cool shots. Yeah. in Some of the places where he was like, ah, I couldn't, I couldn't get it to focus right for a second. And, like, that was the best shot where it was going yeah. from out of focus to in focus. Yeah. And it was some cool things he accidentally did, but turned out really good. Yeah, that's what uh, – well, that's what you just got to do anyways with anything is just do it. And eventually you'll get better at it. And mm-hmm. I'll, you'll accidentally do things like that. And you're like, all right, I'm basically a videographer now. Like, I'm a <laughs> – you know, I'm a pro. No, it's tough. In those cameras, your camera's sweet. I wish I had one. Um but the DSLRs, the mirrorless cameras, those, mm-hmm. like, they focus in and out, and that's what gives it that cinematic feel, like, right. all these guys are doing. Like, when you can focus in on the hunter, like, whoever's a shooter, and then, you know, you focus in further and into the deer, like, that's the coolest shot of all time. That gets, mm-hmm. that gets me fired up. Yeah. And I said fired up. That's five minutes into the episode. I say fired up in 100% a lot on this but it is what it is. I'm you know, excited when I you. talk about yeah, and when I it's talk you. about the outdoors, I get fired up. Okay, this sorry. T-shirt idea is waiting to happen. Fired up, hundred uh, percent. But Jordan did a good job. But those scouting videos are sick. I uh, I actually learned something from Justin Rogers. I don't know if I learned something as much as I was reminded of it. But like your scrapes or not your scrapes. When you were talking about rubs on the video, it made a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. How you know you were trying to figure out where he was going or where he was coming from. Now, granted, they were old rubs, so you know, deer may or may not be in there. Right. But when when he was there, this is what he traveled, so it's most likely what other deer are going to travel. Mm-hmm. So explain a little bit about what you found and yeah. So just taking it, it is really simple stuff. Whenever you you stop for a second, and, yeah. and like you said, this is essentially scouting right now is seeing what did the deer do last year correct um and really the best time to do this type of scouting is immediately following season when you don't have all the vegetation that's grown um so it really is a disadvantage and we're pretty much at the time where you're going to have to be scouting acorns um or food sources because that's what they're going to be on in october um so all of this is just kind of a little bit of getting yourself in the groove of it Mm -hmm. but what we were looking at was um a particular rub line and a pinch point but all of the rubs were on the same side of the tree and so it's it's a very simple thing when you just stop and go oh if they're all on the same side that means he was approaching the trees from the same direction each time which Mm -hmm. tells you which way he's walking right and so if that's where he's walking out he has to be coming from that direction that he was or the opposite direction of where he was heading out from right where he was at right Makes a lot of sense. And then you said you said it, and that's what I want to talk about a little bit more is, I, you know, I grew up hunting in box stands and, and shooting my rifle, you know, 100 yards, killing the deer. Either the deer was there or it wasn't. Yeah. That's just how it was. We corned up, rice bran, whatever. We planted food plots. Uh, that's just how it was. The, and the only sign I ever really looked for as a kid were scrapes. Mm-hmm. You know, that meant, hey, there's a buck here. And that's the most fun, too. It's the most obvious. Yeah. I mean, they've scratched a whole, you know, spot in the dirt. Super obvious. Rubs are so much harder to find. I mm-hmm. feel like rubs you've got to kind of be looking for. Um, same thing when you can see the vegetation the deer are eating. Mm-hmm. It looks like your mom went out there and, and clipped the flowers. Right. You know, they just took off the top. That's not, that's not something you look for all the time. Yeah. But you make a good point in saying that you should scout um, – in, in I'm gonna say March, February, March. Yeah, it's, you know at least February. I like, I mean, our our season ends January 31st. There's yeah, Sherburn WMA is the only public land that is beyond January 31st in yeah. Louisiana. Um, and so honestly, February 1st yeah. is the best time to scout. I uh, and and it's because you make a great point. Right now, you go out there. You're going to find where deer are eating, and they've been eating for months. Mm-hmm. That will work for about a month, yep. wouldn't you say? Yeah, they're, they're Maybe at a the couple point, weeks? They're at the, yeah, it, it's going to be short term. They're, right. they're at the point right now, the acorns aren't quite falling here where we are in Louisiana. Um, I know up north they're starting to fall a little bit, so they're already seeing some of the ranges change. Yeah. But 
bucks have a summer range and a fall range. And so they'll move a mile away depending on food source at a time. Right. And so, yeah, right now, what they're eating right now, I guarantee in a month and a half, they will not be eating that anymore. Correct. You know what they're going to be looking for? Them yellow acorns. Oh. Corn. Corn. <laughs> Good it's old corn. corn out of the bag, boy. <laughs> that apple flavor I got from Walmart today. <laughs> No, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, last weekend, me and Travis and Jacob went to that land that we just acquired, mm -hmm. uh, North Louisiana, almost to Arkansas, actually. And we just were scouting around. I mean, we were in a hurry. We were just yeah. riding, or not even riding, we were walking. I was almost running. So I just wanted to put my eyes on different things on the yeah. map. I saw where some low spots were, some water was, and just blah, 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 and some transition lines between, like, pines and what looked like hardwoods and so I was like, I just want to look at it. I just want to see it. I'm not really getting to look, as, you know, for rubs or for tracks or anything. I just legitimately want to see the land. Mm -hmm. And I got rushed, and toward the end, we had to roll out. And I had my cell cam and a thing of corn. I was like, ah, screw it. I just put it in, like, almost dead center of this 260 acres. Mm -hmm. And was like, we're just going to see if anything smells this or whatever. I don't think anything even walked there. I was like forget it we're just going to put it there see what happens so i put a 50 pound bag of corn and a mineral block because i bought in a mineral block we had all these plans we're going to do a billion different things so i was like maybe they'll smell it and they'll just come over here it took a week for the mm. deer to find it because they're not they're not going through there was There's no so reason much food everywhere yeah there else. was no reason well i think too there was no reason for them to go through there like where i put it they're not going to a bedding area or going to eat or going to water, which they're getting a ton of their water through their vegetation and through what they're actually eating right now anyways. But um, I just was in a panic. But I will say, one week from the day I put it out, a doe finds it that morning right at daylight. Doe comes back two more times. So now she's got it in her brain. She's like, all right, this corn's here every time I come. I'm yeah. coming. And she looked young. Uh, but after that, I meant to show you a picture. Old Big Daddy. Big Daddy must have caught wind of it back at home or something. Yeah. Because he was like, you know what, I'm going to go check it out. So now it's, you know, we've got them coming in, coming in, coming in. Uh, but I do agree, like, right now, it's hard, to, it's hard to pull them off that natural source. Yeah. It's hard to change their, their brain into thinking, I can go here now, too, when they're really just like, you know, safe. This is what I do. This is where I go. Now, granted, it's all going to change. You just want to have that corn and that stuff available for when it does change. Yeah. When they're like, hey, there's no vegetation. Acorns are dropping. I can go acorns. Or, oh, look, there's this corn here on the ground. Right. I mean, so I, I'm, I'm going to put corn out year-round. And uh, I'm, I'm going to hunt some food sources and what, too, like some acorns and mm -hmm. whatnot. But I'm putting corn out. Yeah. I'm going to hunt over corn. I mean, if you have private land, you know, it's it's legal. You're not a guy that says you shouldn't do it. It's not hunting. No, dude. I, I mean, I just got off my lease this yeah. year. Um, so, like, my, my hunting background, um, whenever I did go hunting growing up, like, we were – my grandpa threw out corn. Now, he would not pay for a feeder, but he would go to a spot. It was, like, five minutes from his house. Yeah. But every morning, he would go out with, like, a coffee can full of corn to different spots and just sling corn. Love that. Um, yeah. It, like, now, as as a more experienced hunter, it makes me cringe because I'm like, man, you're getting your scent all up in there all the time. But they probably got to know him as, like, the candy man. Yeah. You know, yeah like that like, guy at church. Oh, you like, can hey, smell, it's yeah. that guy. You, you know? can smell the old man <laughs> yeah. on this. This Means is it. the corn's going to be yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got a good point. I, see, like. I just pour it straight out of the bag. I know yeah. there are those guys that are like, don't put your hand in there. I can remember as a kid doing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, my dad killed like a almost 160, almost scored 160. It was a 10 point at a pipe feeder. Yeah. And right next to the trough that I had just put my hands all through. So, like, it's going to happen. Freak things are going to happen. But increase your odds and don't stick your hand in your corn. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, don't throw it out with your hand. <laughs> but so right now... Just in case I do post pictures of where I've thrown corn at, I'm throwing corn out of the bag right now because I don't know where the heck I'm going to put my feeder. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out what these deer are doing, where they're coming from. Now I will say, man, there's something to, um, at least in my experience here, like the feeders, big bucks avoid the feeder, like the, the spinning feeder. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I've had much better luck uh, on the leases that I have hunted and put corn out 
and places where I have just dumped corn on the ground mm-hmm. out of the bag than if I have a motorized feeder. I don't know what it is. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, I mean they got to know something's up. They might come there at 2 in the morning. Right. But that also could be the fact that there's so many other corn piles in the area. Yeah. You know, you have a section of land that you don't have to worry about, a whole bunch of other Joe Blows out there. Just They're mowing going to have to them down. Ways to find somebody else's Correct. corn. No, that's, that's something to that, I think, for sure. Uh, I mean, if a hog can figure out, a deer for sure can. Because if the hog hears that spinner going off, mm-hmm. poof, it's like it's lunchtime. They're oh, rolling yeah. out. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, the deer's probably thinking, too, like, you know, when that spinner comes out, we go to, we eat, somebody gets, somebody keeps dying. You know, it's like, uh, <laughs> what's the one, what's the one, the lottery. You know, the lottery, the story of the lottery, <laughs> when they throw rocks at it, it's like every, every time I go here, like, somebody dies. Uh, but, yeah, I'm going to keep throwing my corn out yeah. just for now at least, but I am going to put an on-time feeder, no free ads, on-time feeders, if you want to send us a, another feeder. Uh, that'd be really nice. We're too broke to have free ads. Wait, <laughs> that's a great point. I always say just because I'm a freaking moron, I'm always like, no free ads, send me something. But I'm way too broke to not get something for <laughs> free. Right. Oh, thank God for so, our sponsors. So on your private land, you're going to yeah. wait up some spots. Yeah. Um, I'll let you know I have a uh, Groundhog Max that you can attach to your four-wheeler. And you can plant oh. some, some remote food plots if you want to use it. It's funny you uh, say that because we're um, – yeah, I might have to. We're, but – so this land that we're doing now, and I hope they listen to this podcast. I know the guy who, who had it. Maybe he'll listen. So we acquired this land back from the people who've been leasing it for years, um, and we're going to hunt it now as a family. It's going to be fun, and I'm going to manage it, manage it in air quotes. So I'm going to get to plant the food plots, get it yeah. bush hog, get it dissed if I want to, put the stands where we want to put them, and just kind of help oversee that whole process. And to me, that I'm giddy over that. Bro, that's one of my favorite things in the world. Yes. As, so uh, I would I recommend Wildlife Habitat Solutions. Yeah. Um, so there are some things that that uh, I love about Sturgis, and there are some things that I'm always like, ah, it feels like you're kind of picking on people. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, he doesn't like the Grant Woods model. Okay. Um, Grant Woods is growing deer TV. Okay. Um, but I love both of those guys because of the things they make you think through. Right. And, like, one of them is almost like ag land scale. And then you have Jeff Sturgis who's like, you got 40 acres, you got 10 acres, how are you going to make yeah. this better? So, like, man, their stuff is great. I'm a freaking nerd. So we'll have about, to check that out after. About management. We'll talk about well, See, Well, that's what I'm excited about is I'm going to do a – it's kind of late in the season, so we're not going to plow it all up and all that stuff yet. Uh, I am going to get a bush hog, and I'm going to throw a – it's whitetail – Whitetail well, Institute. Yeah, well, thank you. Whitetail yeah. Institute, no plow. Yep. So it's kind of like a mix of everything, but I'm hoping that some of it will take. And so we have the people who hunted it previously looked like they cut some timber. I don't know that they weren't supposed to. I don't know if they did or not. But anyways, there's some random half acre lots That's out wonderful. there. I say lots, plots. Thank you. Yeah. Half exactly half acres all you need for bow hunting, especially. Yeah. Because I can have I can be on one corner, might have a little corn out one side, but the rest of a food plot pulling them to me and it and two i like half acres because the deer feel a little safer Mm -hmm. if you've just got 200 yards by 200 yards of field the likelihood of that deer in the daylight to get in the middle of it is probably zero right you know and they just like the outskirts so it feels tucked in is what i feel like that's that's considered a destination plot to go to at night whereas the half acre is more of the kill plot correct correct so there's like four of these half acre plots uh and then there's one large larger lane that's that i'm gonna hopefully plant the whole thing for rifle so if somebody comes and just wants to rifle hunt boom there's your spot right there you got to go there yeah you know um and the rest of us will just go around to these plots or uh but anyway so i'm fired up about that getting a bush hog and i think i'm gonna go the no plow yeah good old whitetail institute no plow and like that that stuff gets me giddy man i'm excited to see what that's about uh, but half acre to me, it, it, like, I feel like that's just right. Yeah. Right? That's a great size. I mean, like you said, it's the kill plot. I've planted as small as a sixteenth of an acre for a little kill plot. Mm-hmm. Just trying to get them. If I know they're already working through an area, yeah, that might pull them 40 yards closer to me that that, that puts them in bow range. Yeah. So that's all, that's all you're trying to do with those. Man, speaking of pulling them in, well, that's, 
you know, you're talking about managing 10 or 40 acres or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 260 acres that we're getting to hunt. It has some hardwoods in it, but I'm still trying to figure out. I don't know exactly how much. I want to be able to basically house a deer. Yeah. I want to be able to house a monster. I want that dude to stay here. I want him to get, you know, I want him to eat, drink, bed, and chase mm -hmm. all on these 260 acres. Yeah. So how can I do that? So I'm taking, I'm basically putting a plot in every corner. Mm -hmm. In the north corner, west corner, you know, so there's southern, there's going to be a southern plot, one on the east, and then there's one smack dab almost in the middle. I'll show it to you after this. Mm -hmm. And in, in hopes of basically creating a high fence without a high fence. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, hey, do not go over there. There's nothing, the grass is not greener across the creek. Yeah. You know, stay with me. Well, I'll tell you, this is, and this is the Jeff Sturgis stuff. And yeah. like, man, if you, you got me on a topic, like we could do a series of podcasts on just mm. this. Um, that's something that Sturgis is big on is like, you don't have to keep that big buck there from February to September. Yeah. Let him go wherever he wants to go. Yeah. But you want to have the place yeah. that he wants to go come fall. Well, it's funny because, like, I would think that you'd want him there. I mean, I, I'm looking at planting stuff in the spring and stuff, too, mm -hmm. to keep them there, you know, some protein-type stuff that yeah. dies off in July or, you you know, maybe it's peas, yeah. you know, or some beans or something like that that dies off in July and then – kicks back we'll kick back up with something else but it makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. you just want him there now you right. want him to be a, he can go and do whatever he wants to do mm -hmm. but when the food's there that hopefully that brings him there yeah and you know during season that's i mean it's like the corn i put out in this random eight point shows up eight days after yeah you know like i know he's not thinking about does right now but i am thinking that he's like there's other deer here yeah. it must be okay that's what i'm smelling you know, and boom, there's this corn here. So I'm going to hang out here for a while. Yeah. Biggest thing for those, for those bucks is, um, like you think about in the, the summer as they're growing their antlers, their antlers are real tender. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of, um, uh, oh my gosh, what's the word? Blood vessels that yeah. are right there exposed. Yeah. And so it's real painful if they're in like real brushy stuff. So if yeah. you think about like, like a two year old clear cut, like a buck ain't going to be in that in the summer. Because all those thorns and stuff going to wrap on his antlers, Correct. and it's going to hurt. Go but um, whenever it comes to fall, and he's hard horned, now he can get in those areas. Right. So it's like, okay, what for the makes hunter? A lot of sense. For the hunter, you're thinking, uh. what does this buck need in the fall? And I, you know, I would look at the whole mile around you, so like one square mile minimum, probably even go as wide as five miles. Mm -hmm. Because you can pull bucks from a long way away. Right. And so you're looking at, okay, in the fall, what does he need? He needs good food. He needs good security. And he needs to know that there is not pressure in that area. And mm -hmm. so, like, and there's a, this other factor is that big bucks are more isolationist in their approach, whereas does are herd mentality. Bucks don't want to be around anything else until it's time for them to chase. Fact. Exception of like bachelor groups in the summer. Right. Once that testosterone kicks in, man, they're a whole other animal. Right. And so you're designing your property to go, in the fall, this buck is going to want this, this, and this. How do I provide as many of those needs as I possibly can? And how do I, if there's a, if there's a need he's got to go somewhere else for, mm -hmm. how do I try and make him do that at night? I was surprised to see that this, uh, again, uh, I'll just show the picture of the buck on here right now. It's a pretty good eight. Uh, he's probably three and a half year old deer, mm -hmm. I'd say. Young good. to have this big of a rack uh, and to look this healthy. You going to shoot him if you see him? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm going to smoke him. I'm going to lay him down. <laughs> Don't walk out there, dude. I dare that deer to walk out hey, there. What is what is our motto here? I don't know. Is, I'm going to kill the deer. No, That's no. going to be my motto. That's my motto. If it's brown, it's down. I, I mean, I, I don't know. Well, I mean, you have in buck shaming. Yeah. But we are the, oh, yeah. the most average of hunters. Man, I'm just, if you if you could see the deer, the biggest deer I've ever killed, it's a really bad seven point. I'll be honest. It's bad. And by the time I really started getting to where I should shoot better deer, I started duck hunting. Mm -hmm. So, and I've killed every species of duck. You know, I've killed some great ones. But now I'm switching back to whitetail. And yeah. if that dude walks out, 
He's gonna be skull mount right here. Okay, <laughs> yeah. not maybe not right here, but somewhere. I'll schlock him like Tim Wells. Son. Oh, dude, I'm gonna smoke him. But anyways, <laughs> back to that. I was surprised to see that he had a little four point with him. Yeah. And they were just kind of hanging out. So that made me think he was young. I was like, I bet you know he's still. Because you are right, how the big bucks ha- are isolated most mm-hmm. of the time. They don't travel in freaking packs mm-hmm. most of the time. I feel yeah. like, uh, you know, and those are her m- mentality. I was watching a video um, yesterday, and it was looking at the th- that that specific thing that you just referenced. Yeah. How the big bucks don't typically have other young bucks with them, right? But what's interesting is whenever you have areas where there are a lot of older bucks, they hang around with their peers. And so part of it is just the fact there's like that four point and that eight point, maybe one of them's a two and a half and the other one is a year and a half, or maybe right. it's a three and a half and two and a half. Right. But one of them's not a six year old and the other one's a two year old. Correct. And so it's it's like high school. That's just what I was about to say. Seniors, yeah. they yeah. ain't gonna hang out with the freshmen. If there's other seniors around, they'll pal together. God, when did we get so smart? Dude, I think, I think it's from you got watching some... other people. No, and I think it's when you joined us. I'm pretty when sure that's. When you joined that's... on this year, you got a lot. I'm going to be honest with you, dude. You used to be real dumb. Man. But, I man, <laughs> now, now that you hang out with me and Jacob and Travis, dude, man. Dumb smart. I tell you, man, that's something. This year is going to be a big challenge for me. Yeah. Because I have been a private land guy for so yeah. long. Like, I've hunted some public land. Even from the time that I was in high school, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. Yeah. No idea. You got to do a lot of thinking. My dad worked on Fort Polk WMA. Yeah. And he was, he was a contractor out there. And I'd say, hey, Dad, where are you seeing deer? And he'd go, go over here, go in this far. This is where yeah. I've seen them on my drive in. And i go in and I'd see deer. Yeah. But, like, I didn't go out there and I wasn't looking for rubs right. and scrapes yeah. and what oak tree has acorns, which ones don't, and yeah. where are the red. Like, no, I wasn't doing that at 18 yeah. years old. But as I've gotten older, I have – even on private land, I've put a lot of the public land things that I've learned into practice. Mm-hmm. And so it's been like this mm-hmm. baby step training ground to here I am this year. I'm going to be hunting predominantly public land. And right. so I'm finally putting all of this into real practice. Right. And I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of scared about it. Like, I'm, we're the kind of people that we eat deer meat all year long. Right. That offsets our food bill. We're not, like, broke by any means. Right, yeah. Uh, we, my wife and I both work. We're both college educated and we have we make a good living yeah but i mean this is how we live our life right and so i've got to put meat on the ground yeah and i have no doubt in my mind that i'm gonna be able to kill a few pigs right but no getting 100% on a decent no. deer that's gonna be a whole nother game whenever so we've only been on me and travis because we were gonna we still are gonna do this team thing which you guys will ultimately win um <laughs> my, my i'm not gonna lie in the back of my head i'm doing all this scouting and i'm like one, I know Tyler and Travis are not scouting near as hard as nope. I am. I'm at home looking at maps all the time. Yep. But in the back of my head, I'm going, those sorry sack of craps are going to sit up somewhere, basically in each other's laps on the ground, and some dumb doe is going to walk right and we're by. Going we're going to curb stomp. No, we're going to curb stomp the deer. Hold on. We're going to shoot it. <laughs> and I'm going to be so humiliated as an individual. I'm going to take that personally. I'll say this, though. We've only filmed one. Travis goes out there a lot. Oh, okay. We've only filmed one uh, scouting trip, and Travis has gone out there a couple times by himself Watch or with Travis, a friend. Man. Yeah. Now, he, he with this one WMA in North Louisiana, he basically wants to know it inside and out for everything. Mm-hmm. You know, he can be like, hey, this is where I kill ducks. This is where we've seen pigs, and this is where I've seen deer. And that's what most people need to do. Figure yeah. out one place that well. Yeah, and so he has put – I called him it was three weekends ago. I was out of town or something because he sent me a picture. And I was like, where are you at? And he was like, you know, uh, at this certain place. Let me see if I got – he was at uh, – I censored that so nobody could hear it. So, I mean, he's trying to figure it out in and – in and inside and out, and he's fired up about a couple spots for opening day of duck. He's opening, you know, or opening day of bow. But the spot we went to, we it's a long ways back. Yeah, because you can't drive an ATV through there uh, unless you're going to get the game, unless you're going to get your deer. Mm-hmm. And me and Travis, we'll walk. I mean, we're used. To, if you're a duck hunter, mm-hmm. duck hunting gets you ready for this private land deer hunting. There ain't, there won't be a walk in that will be as tough as I have ever walked duck hunting 
Because when you're walking duck hunting, you got waders, yeah, decoys, guns, and you know, you're walking through water, and it's miserable. Yes, it is. But for bow hunting, I've got well, a bow, a hunting. backpack, and I'm walking on ground. <laughs> I'm walking on dry ground. So, yeah. like, it's going to be much easier. But what we found on that one video is we went to a back, back little area, and we liked that you could see, that you, the human, could mm -hmm. see. So if there's a deer laid up 100, 100 yards away, they were clearly laying up in there. I could maybe see her or see him mm -hmm. before she saw me. But probably not going to happen. But what we also liked, and I kind of want to talk about this with you, is that there were um, almost trenches, not a creek, but like a stream when the water gets high, a little runoff. And yeah. it had created basically... It's called an intermittent stream. Thank you. An intermittent stream. And it had created this great place for bucks or deer to walk through mm -hmm. to where when they're walking, it is just a tad lower, but it makes them feel yeah. makes them feel safer. That's and a like, key feature. Oh, yeah. And they, I mean, I know they love wa walking creek beds and stuff too, um, but I talked to my uncle about this, and I said the same thing. I said, dude, anytime I find one of these in my entire life, it's like the deer are smart. Nature has made us this trail. We're going to use it. Mm -hmm. Don't be dumb and jump through the briars. Let's just take this old creek. Yep. And... He said, and this is free. If you're listening in 30 minutes in, you deserve this. Uh, very experienced hunter, my uncle is. Game warden. Yeah. Uh, knows a lot. He likes early season to hunt creeks. Yeah. Because, like, you know, you've talked about it too, is that creek, water, they know nothing is coming from there. There's usually vegetation right next to it. Then they, if they can lay up right next to that, or maybe they lay up in the vegetation near the creek, mm -hmm. eat right outside of it, go right back. Mm -hmm. That's where the big guys like to hang out. Right. Because it's easy. They're lazy. Yeah. They're fat and they're old. What I it's that first scouting video. I get well. I guess it was a second one. The one that didn't do well, uh -huh. um, which is insane. Because yeah. I, th I thought it was uh, as far as content. It was a great video. One, it was so a great better. video. Yeah. Um, but went and found some spots, and and it has like. There wasn't a ton of fresh, fresh sign. Yeah. But it has everything that I think a deer is going to want come deer season. Yeah. So there is grass that's about waist high, so they can bed in that. And that's kind of the double-edged sword of those places you can see open. Right. Like you might be able to see right. one of these up, but can... they also might have their head on you Correct. and you had no idea and they're gone. Correct. But there's some areas like that that they can bed in, you know, three-foot-tall grass, yeah. a lot of vegetation that's like actual browse that's mm -hmm. close to it. There's a legitimate creek that's always running. Yeah. And then there's also an intermittent stream that inter intersects it. Yeah. And then right where all those things come together, there are two oak flats in the middle of a bunch of area that is just lowland habitat. Yeah. It's not oaks. So when those oaks start to so fall... That's the spot. And I, I have a camera there now specifically for... Like, I knew September, I'm not going to get many pictures at all here right now i have already gotten a picture of a few different does is it a cell camera yeah sweet uh, a few different does yeah if i'm if i'm a mile and a half two miles back and i don't even know what i gotta go Heard pull that. a card yeah. um one decent buck and then some hogs that yeah. have come through uh and one of the fattest coons i think i've ever seen in my life shoot him man we got some trophy Cut trophy em. raccoons over here yes um but i think in mid-october when all of our acorns really start to drop that place gonna light up I'm fired up about it. There I am saying fired up again, but I am excited. I'm excited about watching y'all. Honestly, I enjoy the heck out of just watching and then hearing about your trips. Uh, I'm excited to see Travis fail because Travis, I don't think he shot his bow yet. It's uh, September 5th. I don't think he's. I don't think he shot it since June. What? And I keep telling him, I'm like, Travis, you need to get out there and shoot, man. man. Even if you're only shooting from 20, just be able to kill a deer at 20. Man. Now, I will say, now I just got a bow last weekend or whatever it was. Man. I'm only shooting at 20 right now. Yeah. So, and I told my wife, I was like, I need to get out tomorrow. I'm going to shoot one more day at yeah. 20. You're going you gonna to say I got a new bow and not tell the audience that's in here 35 Bear minutes in. Wait. Adapt. Bear adapt. It's nasty. Oh. It's a great, it's, I enjoy it. So that'll be, that'll be another video. Look for that review video coming soon. But, yeah, I got to start getting out there and start shooting at 30, 20, 40. Mm. I want to shoot up to 60. Yeah. Because those half acre plots, I want to be able to shoot almost to, well, I want to shoot across it. Yeah. Half acre is about 50 by 50. Yeah. It's about. So I want to be able to shoot across it when they step in that bad boy. Yeah. 
Because if he's a monster, I'm shooting him. <laughs> hey, no hesitation. Yeah, man, boom, done. <laughs> Aim low if he ducks. We yes, get him. fired up about that. Uh, what a great whitetail talk. Let's go right into, we're at 35 minutes, so let's go into our leaky waders. Okay. You said you have a great one, so I'll let you start. <laughs> Do you want me to start with the other one? Yeah. What? The, the first no, one? No, <laughs> no. Go, go with the screen time appropriate one. <laughs> All right. So, um, like I said, I, I hunt most of the meat that I eat every year. Yeah. And so, um, like two weeks ago, I made 35 pounds of summer sausage and breakfast sausage. How was that? Of, um, that? Hey, it turned out great. Um, but last year, I shot a sow and uh, I turned her into some link sausage. And Ugh. so... Not really a fan of link sauce. Not a link sausage guy? I'm thinking of like, maybe I'm not thinking of the right thing. I'm thinking like, like smoked link sausage? Oh, yeah, I'm good with that. Okay, cool. I'm thinking of like red nastiness. No, 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 no. Yeah. Different thing. Sorry. Sorry. I apologize for, for confusing you on that. Even putting that in my brain. Thanks yeah. a lot for that. Sorry, man. All right, continue. Trauma. Sorry. Uh, so, um, I have cooked some of this sausage all throughout the year. So, the other day, I thaw out um, some elk roast from elk that I shot a while back. And humble brag. Hey, you know, I'm not gonna, that was one of the sad story, one of the luckiest things ever. Yeah. So it was September of 2020. So this, this elk needs to be eaten. Right. Like yeah. Now. It needs to hurry up. Be yeah. Um, it was Labor Day. So, dude, two years. Two years, man. Happy anniversary. Wow. We had gotten uh snowed out of an area in colorado we're hunting over the counter which is can be super frustrating with the number of people Mm -hmm. so we bounced to like this one unit that's over the counter that doesn't have snow forecasted the next day which would be labor day we drive overnight get there 1 a.m sleep in the trucks we wake up late it's like eight o'clock leaving trailhead we hike we we hike six miles two thousand vertical feet up back to an area and we're not even where we want to be at yet we're still on the main trail and so we decide to get off the main trail, bus brush as we to like not drop elevation again. Anyway, basically cut off two miles, but through some thicker area. Yeah. And so we go, I don't know, quarter, half mile along this area. And I just smell and I go, I, I smell elk. And I turn, and I look at my buddy DJ and I was like, you smell it? He said, yeah. So there's, there's a group of five of us. And I stop and I look down and I don't know, 200 feet below me in this little open area is a bull elk and he i mean he's he's not a stud by any means but he's legal yeah and so i'm up for shooter and i go down there i I make my way i mean it's a probably a 45 degree downhill if not a little steeper and uh anyway my buddy dj drops off the back side of the ridge i'm on the the strong side of it with the elk he does a little bit of calling just enough to pull him in and i end up shooting this elk at 47 yards i was drawn for two minutes Oh my and I'm goodness. starting to shake. I'm in the yeah. wide open. I'm yeah. like, look, both these guys passed on shots already, yeah. and they didn't come out with an elk. I'm letting this thing fly. Yeah. So, like, not the most ethical of shots, right. but I'm shooting my shot here. Yeah. Aim for – there's a uh-huh. there's a shot right here where you can shoot him right through the heart. Yeah. And I hit just a little high, and I got his jugular and his carotid. And I mean, it's like something from, like, 300 <laughs> the blood going. Uh. So, I uh, end up killing my first bull elk. But anyway. it's a great story. I never hey, heard it. Dude, it was sick. Yeah. So that day we went six miles back, two thousand feet up. Shot an elk that day about one o'clock. Had to walk him back. Packed him out. Went right back down the mountain. That's pretty sick, man. It was. That's a great story. And then we got snowed out the rest of the week. Eesh. It's great. Um, but anyway, thawed out some elk steaks. Yeah. Had a marinate the night before, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna cook some sausage with this. And so I pull out some of my sausage the day of, and here's where the story goes wrong. I'm going to smoke the sausage. So it's right now it's just raw sausage. Right. I put it on the smoker, set it up 275 degrees, and I have it on there for about an hour and 15 minutes. It's just making me hungry. And uh, I grill uh, my, my elk steaks, pull them off, and I'm like, all right, let me go get the sausage off, so grab it. Me and my wife eat. It's, it's delicious. Yeah. I, my, my little baby girl, she's seven months old. I cut a piece of elk steak for her. And she's like sucking on the elk steak. And oh, she I saw that it. post. Oh, That's what I'm talking about. And made my heart happier yeah, than anything uh-huh. in the world. My baby girl likes elk. Yeah. And uh, so I'm, I guess it's about two in the morning. And uh, Jesse said, man, I'm nauseous. And she starts throwing up. Uh, and I was like, oh, no. She had some Kroger sushi for lunch. And I was like, this ain't going to be good for you. Yeah, it's the Kroger sushi. Yeah. 4 a.m., 
I wake up and I run to the bathroom and from at 4 a.m. I throw up and from 4.30 to 2 p.m. I did not go 15 minutes without chunking my guts up. I mean, there's nothing left in my stomach. I'm throwing up bile. Uh, I'm supposed to play uh, guitar and sing yeah. at our pastor's sister-in-law's wedding, uh, wedding funeral. Yeah. Uh, much different thing. Much different. <laughs> much different. God. Uh, I'm supposed to do that at like 11, and I call him, and I'm like, hey, I, I can't. Yeah. I can't make it. Like, I can't stand up without throwing up. Turns out. I guess I did not cook that pork sausage enough. Maybe it got up to like 140, 145 instead of 160, 165. Yeah, you think? And I, I'm so used to doing it. Like, yeah. I've done this so much. You didn't stick at the thermometer. I, I didn't. I didn't. And boy, did I pay the price. Yeah, no kidding. And so I spent all day Saturday. I mean, it, I, have, I haven't thrown up like that I don't, since I was a little kid and I had food poisoning that time. Yeah. Like, it's absolutely awful. And huh. so the best news out of that is my baby girl is not old enough to where I would give her sausage because she could yeah, choke so on it. Yeah, give it to her. She did not get it. So she was and good. so my wife and I are both down with food poisoning all day long, and we're, like, <laughs> doing our best to take care of each other. Yeah. And my wife is a stud. Right. Okay? She didn't eat near as much of sausage as I did. Yeah. And so it didn't hit her quite as hard, but she was a dang trooper and took care uh. of me all day. But, yeah, that's my leaky that's waiter. Tough. Food poisoning that's two tough. days ago. You think that's what food poisoning is? Yeah. Are you saying that's food poisoning? There's there's different kinds of food yeah. poisoning. You could get something like that's too old. Yeah, yeah, something too old and spoiled. That's one type. Right. Um, you have the kind where it's undercooked and you get a pathogen. Uh, you can also and there's different types of food poisonings even within that. So like undercooked bear meat or pork. Like sometimes you can get uh, trichinosis or trichinellosis, yeah. whichever one. Cibernella says trichinosis. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't show up till two weeks later. And you just have the worst diarrhea ever. <laughs> and you don't know unless you go get tested. You want to know about diarrhea, you just ask Jacob. <laughs> I'm kidding. He's been eating clean. He's doing much better. Uh, my leaky waiter is... So Jordan caught wind of the Bernice land. Uh. Uh, wow, I said Bernice, but of the land that I'm going to be hunting. And we had said all year that we we're going to hunt private. Like, open day, me and Travis are going to go private land, or excuse me, hunt public. Public land hunting, uh, just whenever, whenever we can. Uh, I would almost encourage you not to hunt public land on opening day. And go there? Opening day's a Saturday, and yeah, everybody so, and their brother's going to be out. Yeah. I'm, I now almost you say don't want to go That was kind of dumb. Anyways, I can talk about that with Travis. So we're going to hunt some public land. I don't have a ton of places to go around my house. This place that I've, we have acquired now is way off. So it's like a whole trip. you got to bring a tent. And uh, so I said that to Jordan. My leaky waiter for the twice now of the 11 episodes is Jordan-based. Uh, Jordan just ragged me. And he was like, oh, you're never going to hunt public. You're never going to do it, man. You're never going to hunt public. I was like, yes, I will. I promise. I'm going to do it. Oh, you guys are selling out. We're going to win. It's going to be so easy. Whatever. So my leaky waiter is just having to hear him reference that via text message in our group or uh, just him telling me that I'm going to be a private-only snob, So, which <laughs> hey, I'm okay with, which he, I invited y'all to. If he calls you a private-only snob, ask him, and this is, I think this might be the biggest point of contention in Jordan and I's relationship right now, is why do you have to have an Ozonics unit in the tree with you? Oh, the Ozonics unit in the Garmin site. Ozonics unit in the Garmin site, both would put me out of a lot of debt. If he if he would let me have those and I could sell them, I could pay off a little bit of debt I have and would really change mine and my wife's life. Uh, we love Jordan. We absolutely love Jordan. Yeah, we like Jordan. I wouldn't go love. I'm Ooh. kidding. I love Jordan. But I like messing with him just as much as I like talking to him. So, But I'm excited. Man, all this talk, this has been – I've never been this excited about deer hunting, I think. Mm. And it's because we have a little challenge going. It's all it's because of um, the new land that we have. It's because of my new bow. Like I'm just fired up. I'm excited about yeah. it. Um, and with every episode, I feel like we've always gotten back to this. But if you have any questions, we may not be the guys that that can answer them. Probably not. But we probably know somebody that can. That's the whole reason we have this podcast. We were supposed to have uh, Mr. Todd Wooden on from Simmons Sporting Goods archer department couldn't make it uh got tied up last minute but he will be on next week so he promised actually i don't know if he promised but i'm gonna make him promise so be looking for that that'll be next uh tuesday 
This yeah, because this one will come out yeah on Tuesday the sixth. So check that out next week. Make sure you subscribe, like, leave a comment on YouTube. Then go over to Spotify, play and like it there. Then go over to Apple, Apple Podcasts, do it there. Mm-hmm. Then go to TikTok. Do all that. Then watch all of our videos on repeat on YouTube just over in the background. And over <laughs> until we get to 4,000 watch hours and we get monetized and I can quit my day job. <laughs> I'm kidding, not kidding, boss. Anything before we go? Hey, we just appreciate you guys listening. Absolutely. Hey, this is a dream to be able to do anything like this. You just know, to talk, professionals, honey. But it's awesome. I'm a professional. Do you have another job other than this? Oh, dude. Uh, oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> go to church. <laughs>